We're so glad you're here with us today. We just wanted to welcome you to Linked Up Kids Service today. And we know that today you are here for a reason. You were ordained to be here in this moment watching this program at this exact time in your life for a reason. So we ask you to press in and listen up and stay with us all the way through. And we know God has something for you today. If this is your first time visiting with us, please make sure that you check into the website and check in, uh, check in with us. And we're so glad you're here. Thanks. Okay, let's pray. God, we thank you for allowing us to come to Linked Up Kids or to view Linked Up Kids to learn more about you and your son, Jesus. God, I thank you that as we go throughout this, this lesson, that you will help us to learn more and more and more about you and that we will have a great time doing so. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. of heights to the depths of the sea creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring every creature unique in the song that it sings all the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing god all powerful untamable all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing god from the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming indescribable Okay guys, let's do the memory verse. It comes from Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Okay, now repeat after me. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Psalms 119, verse 105. Okay, let's say it together. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Psalms 119 through 105. Good job, guys. Well, here we are. Yep. We are the first men to set foot on Mars. Yep. Think about it, Mick. All the people who have dreamed about being here, and we're the first. Yep. What do you think about it, Mick? Well, what do you think about living on Mars? It's kind of boring. Boring? Mick, we're on Mars. I know we're on Mars. You know what else is on Mars? Nothing. No Taco Bell. No Chick-fil-A. No video games. No TV. But it's Mars, bro. It's boring, broski. I'm here five minutes and I'm thinking, what's on TV? I guess it can be kind of dull for two guys raised on Earth. Don't get me wrong, Dwayne. It's beautiful and amazing. But what happens when we get the urge to drink an Icy? 
And there's not an icy machine for like thousands of miles. No, there's not. But maybe one there could but maybe one day there could be. You think so? Heck. If humankind can send two guys like us up here, surely they can put a convenience store with an icy. And a movie theater? And a Chick-fil-A? And an icy machine? And a church? Funny you say church, because I've always believed, with God, anything is possible. Yeah, you're right. God was always doing things that seemed impossible in the Bible. He's done impossible things in my life, many times. Mine too. I don't know, Mick. Maybe one day there will be a convenience store with an ice machine up here, or maybe even one day Mars will have life. But regardless of everything that happens, I can trust my life and do amazing things with God. You said it, brother. Now let's get back to Earth. I really want an icy. Already? We just got here. Life can sometimes get mixed up, just like this cube. It seems no matter what we do, things don't get any better. We think we have the solution, we think we know it's going to work, but our plans fail. And we're left thinking, how are we ever gonna fix this? God sometimes allows us to get in those impossible situations. He doesn't do it to frustrate us, but to teach us something. With God, all things are possible. With God, life can get straightened out. God knows what we need before we need it, and he knows how to make it happen. And God isn't limited by human imagination or ability. When God decides to do a miracle, the impossible just kind of happens. When life seems impossible, when you don't know where to turn, turn it over to Jesus. Put it in God's hands and let him set things straight. Let him put it right. God is always doing the impossible. And if you trust him, he will do a miracle for you too. on Mars one day? That's a question men and women asked long before we ever sent a man into space. Back in the early 1900s, a man named Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote an entire series of books about John Carter, a Civil War soldier who traveled to Mars and became a great hero. His stories inspired the creation of Superman, Flash Gordon, and even Star Wars. What seemed impossible in Edgar Rice Burroughs' day doesn't seem so impossible today. Back then, the idea of traveling into space seemed an impossibility, but advancements in rocket science and other technologies have allowed us to send people to space many times over. We even sent men to the moon and back. Right now, there are astronauts living and working in space for months at a time in the International Space Station. That's another dream that seemed nearly impossible only a few decades ago. But the more those astronauts study life in space and the more we learn about space, the idea of putting human colonies on the moon and even Mars doesn't seem all that impossible. Humankind has done many things that were once thought impossible. 
Ships have sailed around the world that people once thought was flat. People overcame gravity by inventing air travel. We've covered distances farther than ever thanks to the invention of the combustion engine and cars. We made technology once thought to be stuff of science fiction, like handheld devices that allowed us to wirelessly talk and even watch TV into real life. As much as we've used technology to solve these challenges, there are still things in this world humans cannot do. We can't defeat the laws of nature. We can't change the human heart. We can't do many things that still deem it impossible. Thankfully, when life throws us these impossible challenges, we have someone we can turn to. We have, you named it, God. In today's story, we're gonna read about something Abraham once thought impossible. We're going to read how God fulfilled his promise to a man and a woman too old to have a children that they would be a family. This is Sarah. Hi. Sarah was Abraham's wife. One day, as Abraham sat near the entrance of his tent, God appeared to him. Abraham looked up and three men stood before him. God promised Abraham that he and Sarah would someday have a son. Ah. In fact, God promised Abraham that he would have many children, oh. even more than the stars in the sky. Uh. Now, Sarah was very old when God made this promise. When she heard that God promised to give her a child, she laughed. The messenger of God stopped Sarah. He asked, is anything too hard for the Lord? Sarah chose to trust God, and she became pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. The son's name was Isaac. God's promises came true for Abraham and Sarah. Abraham became the father of many nations, and from his child came children, and from their children, more children, until Abraham's descendants were truly more numerous than the stars in the sky. Abraham and Sarah trusted God for the promise and believed that God was faithful. Let's review the main point. Abraham was an old man when God called him to travel to the wilderness. God promised Abraham that even though he was old, he would be the father, father of a mighty nation. Abraham believed because he had faith, but Sarah, who was very old, just laughed when she heard God's promise. Imagine both of their surprise when the prediction of the visitors made came true. Even though they were old, God gave them a child of their own. That child, Isaac, had two children, Esau and Jacob. God would change Jacob's name to Israel, and through his 12 children, God raised up the nation of Israel. God can do things we think are impossible. When all hope seems lost, when our own intelligence and skill just won't do, we can trust God to do miracles for us. When we have faith in Christ, we can see miracles take place. God changed the heart of a bully. He can bring peace to a family in turmoil. He can bring healing to the sick. God just asks us to pray and believe he has the power to answer our prayer, no matter how impossible our problem may seem. Perhaps the greatest illustration of what this means comes from one, one of the outer space stories I mentioned earlier. In the Empire Strikes Back Star Wars episode, Luke Skywalker becomes upset when his spaceship sinks into the swamp. Yoda tells him to raise the spaceship with the force, but Luke tells him it's impossible. Does anyone remember what happens next? Yoda does the impossible. Yoda's faith in the force causes the ship to rise easily out of the swamp. Of course, the force is just pretend, but God, who we put our faith in, is very real. I don't know what miracle you need this morning, but I know that God is already working on the solution. God can do what we think is impossible. He's just waiting for us to believe in him. One day soon, it may happen. We may send men and women to Mars, not just for a visit, but to be permanent settlers on another planet. 
another impossible dream made possible. But long before that happens, God will have done countless miracles for those who believe in him. Miracles still happen, you know, and God loves doing the impossible. Give God your impossible situation today and expect a miracle to happen. Let's pray. Dear God, give us the faith to believe in the impossible. In Jesus' name, amen. We've reached a very important part of our lesson today. This is the part where we take a moment to address those that might need to have a relationship with Christ. This is your opportunity to get to know God on a whole new level. This is your opportunity to accept Christ in your heart. If you want to take that moment and that opportunity right now, I'm going to pray with and for you. If you will repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for me. I thank you that through his blood, I am saved. And I thank you that he was raised again on the third day. Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. I thank you, God, that someday I will live with you forever in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, you're saved. We're going to send you this book, but I need you to send me your information to this email. Send the information so you can get this book. All right? And it's going to tell you a little bit more about what you did today. We're so excited and glad for you to be a part of the family. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel. Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel. 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms. Convert the Queen of Yasmin, Song of Solomon. Convert the Queen of Yasmin, Song of Solomon. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, and Joel. Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, and
All right. Today we're going to have a game uh, where we're stacking apples. We're going to have two contestants. You're going to race to see who can stack four apples. You have five apples to choose from, but you only need to stack four. You got 60 seconds to stack them. Once you stack four, your stack needs to stand for 10 seconds. Who's ever stacked four, whoever stacked four first and there stand for 10 seconds will win. Okay? All right, let me demonstrate. Candace, could you set me up with a timer? Good effort, guys. Good effort, guys. Set. Good job. Good job. All right.